Hello everyone and welcome to another Candy Cane Konigo tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do two dynamic poses with a male mannequin. On this side of the paper, we're going to do the kind of natural, calm, dynamic pose. And on this side, we're going to do the super dynamic action pose. So let's begin with the very calm one. And this is just going to be a man standing. And as before, we're going to begin with the action line which as you can see really doesn't have much going on but it's still a slight S curve now I think his body is going to be slightly turned away from us so let's put in that 3D element there and uh, I gotta be careful not to make this picture too big or I'm gonna be scrambling to keep it on the page so that's about the size of the torso and we're going to tilt the shoulders in this direction and tilt the hips in this direction because when the shoulders and hips tilt opposite each other it makes it look a lot more natural and uh, actually that is where I get the term dynamic from when the shoulders and hips are turned tilted in opposite directions now I'm going to indicate where the arms will be and where the legs will be now that we have that let's put in the legs themselves and he's going to have one leg straight and the other sort of relaxed which means that it's going to be bent and sort of thrown out to the side and here's where the foot will be actually I'm going to bring that leg in a little more because I want it to look really natural not like he's putting that leg out in a weird way or anything and then this arm will be put on his hip there and this one will be just hanging and it's actually going to be mostly obscured by the body so we'll just put a line there that eventually vanishes behind the leg and I'm going to curve in back because if you look at the human body there's always an S curve going on so wherever you're trying to have your drawing have a really cool look try to put in natural S curves wherever possible because it's really a pleasing effect and it makes it look more realistic <clears throat> now let's put in the head and he's actually going to be looking straight at us and we don't want the head to be too large but that is the general idea of where the head is going to be placed so I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit and now that we have that I'm going to move on to filling in the parts that we left out and his foot does go off the screen which is um, a little annoying to me but whatever so I'm going to erase the action line just a little bit so that it's easier for me to fill in the blanks on this mannequin and then I'm going to go through and fill it in give it a human shape instead of this mannequin robot shape so I'm actually going to go into time lapse right now As you can see, while there are some curves here, none of them are as defined as they are on the female body. And you can easily set your mannequins apart, or your characters apart, but I'm working with mannequins right now, by having the male characters be distinguishable by having their legs much thicker than the female legs, and far less curving going on, because even though the back curves in here, it doesn't go in half as much as it would on the female body, and while there is definition of the lower leg, 
it is not only thicker, but the curves here are far shallower. So, uh, he's not terribly muscular. I'm not going to do a muscular figure on this one. But, there. Anyway, this is the first pose, and I'm going to put in these lines again. So that's what we have for pose number one. And now let's move on to the second pose, the super dynamic one. And uh, the idea for this one is a guy throwing a punch. So let's start on that. Now what I'm going to do for this pose, just to make things a whole lot easier, is draw the arch of his punch. This is the most important part of the drawing, so we're going to put the action line for it here now. Yes, it is so important that it gets its own action line, which is just an arch. This is about where the fist is going to stop, and this is about where his shoulders will be. So let's put in the fist and the arm. And now we know where his head goes. His head will be partially obscured by his arm. and the curve of his shoulder will arch back into his back. Now that we have all that placed, we can put in his actual action line. And this is such a complex pose that I'm just going to do this line for the hips. You can already see from this action line that the shoulders are bending opposite the hips. So it's not necessary to put in both, it'll just really confuse this drawing. And here are the hips and where the legs will attach. And here's the other leg, and I'm actually going to do some extreme foreshortening here by having his foot behind his leg. And there's going to be foreshortening involved on this arm, but before we put that in, let's move this leg down just a little bit, I think, so that we can see all the important parts of this image, and the arm back here is a very important part, so I'm just going to leave the leg like that, and we know the shoulders are like here, right here, because the body is turned pretty much sideways, so we know it's a straight line from here to the other shoulder, which means that the arm comes down here and then bends forward and there's the fist and now we can erase this part behind him and we have his other arm coming realistically out from behind his back okay now we're going to put in just a little bit more detail with regard to where things will be placed And I think his legs should be coming out slightly, slightly to our right. Just to give him a little more balance. And if you wanted, you could do some foreshortening here, like having his leg widen as it gets near us. But that's not what this tutorial is about, so I'm not going to do it in this video at least. I did do a video on foreshortening or perspective, and you can see it here, but um, back to this tutorial, I'm going to go into time lapse right now and put some more detail on this mannequin. Alright, that is it for that pose, and I'm going to put the action lines back in, 
so that you can see how we got this pose. And that is it for this tutorial. I hope you, this video was helpful to you. And uh, this is in the Drawing Essential series, and I have a couple more videos to go in this series. If you haven't caught the other videos that I made, here they are. I made a playlist of them, and I hope you enjoy them. I think they'll be really helpful to you. And don't forget to look to take a look around my whole channel. I've got a whole lot of other videos, other step-by-step -step drawing tutorials, and speed paints, and all kinds of things that you will probably enjoy. So uh, check it out, and I'll see you there.